Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach, and today we have with us Sean Ryan, who's the founder of Whitewater International Consulting. Sean, welcome to the program. Mike, thanks so much. I'm glad to be here. Hey, um, so give us a little bit of background on yourself, and I know we want to talk about your brand new book, Get In Gear, The Seven Gears That Drive Strategy to Results. So I want to dive into that because I love um, gears and, and processes, so I want to talk about that. But uh, what's your background and what led you to start your um, a firm? Awesome, Mike. Thanks a bunch. Uh, well, my, my background is... Uh, I started out, uh, came out of uh, engineering school and uh, thought that I wanted to be an engineer. Went to work for Pacific Gas and Electric in California a long time ago, uh, and uh, back in 1980 or so. And uh, it was, I had a great, great time at PG&E and uh, had a lot of mobility in the organization, did lots of different things over the seven or eight years that I was there. I did some engineering. I did some technical sales, led a sales team, led a marketing team. And one of the things that, and what really kind of drove me to where I am today, Mike, is that I was struck in this company that had a lot of great people. And the organization at that time was, was going through a lot of change and challenges uh, coming out of the oil crises of the 1970s and, and completely readjusting how they interacted with their customers. One of the things that I was struck by, though, was in spite of having great people and having a pretty good organizational intent in terms of what they were trying to do, that people weren't really in a position uh, to be able to contribute their best every day. It was almost like a uh, gawky, you know, 13-year-old, 14-year-old kid who's got lots of potential, but some days they just can't seem to get it right. Yeah, and a and so my yeah, a little clunky, you know, and you could see all kinds of cool stuff, but you could just never see all the piece parts really come together and and operate the way it could. And and so I, I left, I ended up leaving uh, Pacific Gas and Electric. I had a chance to go to work with a small boutique consulting uh, firm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and, and they were really just getting started. And and my mission as I as I left PG&E and started kind of the next phase of my career and where I've mostly been for the last 33 years was to help create great organizations where people could come to work and contribute their best every day. And and so I think there are a couple components to that. One is great organizations and what's that look like and how do we create those? And then how do we, within those organizations, create environments where where people can contribute their best, where uh, all of their capabilities are welcome and they're brought to the table every day so that people are psychologically engaged and committed uh, to the journey. You know, I, I, I know that's like probably the main focus of the book, which we want to get into, but one thing I want to dive in a little bit deeper on is when you say we want to help create great organizations where people want to come. To me, that sounds like if you lined up 30 leadership development coaches and said, what do you do? They would say pretty close to the same thing. Now, I don't mean to mean be mean about that, but I want you to clarify and go, and how we do this is different than most people because, right? So what is it that would make an organization sit up and take notice and go, yeah, 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 I heard that before, but ooh, Sean, uh, you approach it this way. That sounds unique. Sure. Uh, well, and and I would imagine, look, I, I don't know that any of us either a have all of the answers, uh, or b think about it so radically differently. Like we found the secret sauce that yeah. nobody else yeah, yeah. Uh, has, right? But you know, there probably are some things that we think about a little bit differently. Uh, the the first is, what do we do inside of organizations uh, that enable people to be their best? Right. And, and how do we psychologically engage people? Uh, and, and it, there, there are a lot of components to it. Uh, not all of which we cover in the book, but, but just thinking about, first of all, do we, do we have a vision that inspires people that people want, people want to contribute to something 
probably bigger than themselves. Yeah, we want to come to work and we want to we want to earn money to be able to take care of our families, but there are a lot of different ways to do that. When when I pick an employer, you know, or even choosing to work for myself, what's what's my vision? What's my purpose? What's my intent? Is there something that this organization is doing that I can really attach to? and psychologically engage with. So that would be, you know, helping people think through what, what is that purpose that what's that higher calling that we aspire to in this organization that's different than what other people do. So that, that would be one component. The second component is do we have a value set in the organization that people want to play within? And, and obviously things like trust and respect and honesty and integrity um, are, are absolutely critical to that. And, 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 and you take those two things together, kind of the, the vision and the, the values, if you will, that then translate into, into culture. The, to me, those describe the playing field. What's, what's the playing field that we're on? And in any game that you play, the first thing anybody wants to know is, how do we win here? Which is really the organizational, in organizations we call, that's, that's the vision, that's the strategy that we execute on. We win by moving in this direction. And then the second thing you want to know in any game you play, what are the boundaries that we play within? What, what rules are inbounds? What rules are out of bounds? And your, your value set describes really the, the widest parameters of the playing field. That you say, they tell me what moves are inbounds, what moves are out of bounds, and and when you have a, you say it starts with this incredibly well descri- um, defined playing field. So that way, people know how to win. They know how much latitude they have to make decisions to do things, and and it gives the opportunity to push responsibility to people. Uh, and and when you've got that, you you've got the beginnings of what it takes to attract and keep the kind of people that you want to be really successful. And and you attract people who want to be really successful in that environment. And and culture plays so much into that, and then communicating it, and then maintaining it, right? Because I think that a lot of people go, oh yeah yeah, well, we have a great place to work, and and then they might, and then it's sporadic. One day it's great, one week it's not. And I think that it needs to be developed defined and then really, really maintained. Uh, ab- absolutely. And, and you think about how much organizations have even thought through what's the culture that we want to have here. And, and I always describe it as well, we, we've got this simple yet can get very complex model. It's maybe the only model that I've consistently used over the 33 years that I've been uh, in this space. And, and that is, we call it the cloud model. And one cloud is, here's our current state, here's where we are today. Uh, the uh, second cloud is, here's our future state, here's the place we're trying to get to, right? Which, which implies then the vision and the strategy and the things yeah. that we have to be able to do su- to be successful. There, there are two things that really connect those two clouds. One is the strategy. How do we position ourselves to create value for our customers, our stakeholders, the, the clientele that depend upon us. And that, that's whether you're a government organization, a for-profit business, a not-for-profit. What makes us unique and distinctive is, is really the, what, what value do we create? That's, so that's the strategy piece. The, the second connector, and it, it's like two intertwined strands of DNA, is that cultural piece. What's our cultural strategy? What do we want this to be like? What kind of people do we want to attract? How do we want people to behave? And you have a far greater chance of success when the, the organizational strategy and the cultural strategy behave like two intertwined strands of DNA. They complement each other. They support each other. They work together. Where you run into trouble is when you don't know what the strategy is or that's diffuse and or misunderstood or it's not adapting quickly enough to the place that you want to get to and you've got a culture that's completely misaligned to the strategy. You, you want teamwork and you reward everyone for independent contributor behavior. Well, you're, you're, you're going you're gonna to be fighting yourself all of the time. So at what point, you've been in business for a minute or two, and this book that you have coming out, um, is this your first book? This is the first book, and uh, it's not actually what I thought was going to be the first book. It just kind of ended up that way. 
at what point did you go, you know what? I've been doing what I'm doing and making a difference in the world. We may need to put this in a book. So what made you make that decision? And then what made you kind of select the, the direction that you chose for the book? Sure. So it probably goes back to maybe eight years ago. And we, our, our business, we've done t- typically three things or kind of three, um, you know, legs to the stool. We work with organizations on creating strategy, that whole part about how do we position ourselves in the marketplace to be successful, whatever that market is. We we help organizations then drive their strategy, execute on it. And then the third part is we help develop and grow the leaders necessary to make those other two things happen. And, and it probably wasn't com- completely that clear in my mind Eight, eight years or so ago, we just did all those things. We just didn't have all the piece parts assembled correctly. Yeah. And a client came to me one day that we'd done a lot of strategy work with. And he said, look, our, our, the, it is a pretty good sized organization. He said, our divisions have good strategies now. We're pretty good at figuring out how do we position ourselves, create value for our customers, distinguish ourselves in the marketplace. He goes, where we're really falling short is on the execution, driving that strategy to all of the people on the team and being successful at it. He said, can you help us figure out how do we, what we call then, drive strategy to execution? And, and I was like, absolutely love. Let, let's jump in and let's figure that out. Because and I, nothing, I took really, a step back. nothing really happens until something gets done. Right, right. And it's okay. How do we make sure that it gets done? And really, Mike, it comes down to how do we align whether whether you've got a small entrepreneurial company company with two or three people uh, operating out of somebody's garage, or uh, you know, Fortune 100 size company with 50,000 people spread around the, the globe. It's how do we align everybody in the organization to what it is that creates value for our customers and then in turn turns around and creates value for us? And how do you create that alignment? And, and, and what we saw was often people were misaligned. People are busy. They're doing a lot of stuff, but they're not necessarily getting the right stuff done. And so when we, when we got that challenge from our client, we started looking at a lot of the work that we'd done over the previous 20 some odd years at that point and, and began to realize that we already had many of the pieces of the puzzle and the, especially where it talks you know, when, when we think about it at the individual or team level driving execution and, and this is, as John Cruck, the baseball player said 20 years or so ago, a lot of this is not rocket surgery. <laughs> yeah. we, we just looked at the pieces that we had and we thought, you know what, 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 when people really achieve well, what do they do? Well, first of all, they've got some kind of result oriented goal. They've got something that they want to accomplish, not just stuff that they want to do. The, the second thing we recognize that really drives individual and team performance is having a visible scorecard that's available to me in a way that I can change the outcome of the game while it's still being played. And, and the, the best analogy I would give to you around that is if, if you're driving down the street and you look over and there's a, a, two soccer fields side by side or two basketball courts side by side. And on, say, both basketball courts, you've got two, you've got kids playing basketball and on one court the kids are keeping score and on the other court they're not keeping score how long would it take before you recognized the difference could you tell me from 100 yards away which court they were keeping score on and which court are they not keeping score on yeah well absolutely because the the kids where you keep score, they're playing with more intensity. They're probably giving each other more feedback. Uh, they're doing the things necessary to win. The kids are not keeping score. They're just jacking up three point shots, and they're probably having a lot of fun. But there's no there's a lack of focus and intensity. So the the first part is the end the clear end result oriented goals. The second part was the visible scorecards, and then we also knew that. People who who achieve their best in anything, whether you're playing defensive back in the NFL 
or you're a great violinist, uh, or you're uh, working a great production line worker in a manufacturing facility, there are certain behaviors, activities that distinguish good from great performance. And, and we call those the performance drivers. How well do we know what the performance drivers are? And then how much time do people spend on those performance drivers, those critical behaviors, tasks, activities, whatever, that distinguish good from great performance? Or do they get caught up in the swamp, in the mess, the mud, and start spending their time doing activities versus working on getting to end results? And then, and then the fourth concept we readily recognized was the need for follow-up, follow-through, really for two reasons. One is to generate learning. So when we aren't on track, are we learning and changing? And then the obvious, you know, the glue that holds everything together is accountability. People perform better. They both, they both do a better job of moving toward the goal, the strategy, the thing we're trying to get to, and playing within that value set, within the boundaries, within the culture when there's accountability for doing so and great performers like accountability and mediocre and poor performers don't like accountability a whole lot. So those, those really, there were four things that we identified for driving individual and team performance. And so, uh, so that was great. And that worked really well for that client and a lot of other clients. We started kind of spreading out and working on it. And so, Then it was probably not quite three years ago, I started thinking, you know what, we've got something here that a lot of people could benefit from. And what if, that was the point at which I got to, what if we put that into book form so that we could share the word? And, you know, share the word, that's that's kind of presumptuous, (laughs) but 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 share the thinking with people and maybe other people could find some benefit in it but before i could even start the book i took a step back and i thought you know what what we've got here works really well in the context that we're operating in an organization that has a good strategy they've got and, and many of the clients we were working with at that time they had good people they had a lot of things already moving in the right direction what what are there other things though if we didn't have all of these conditions in place are there other things that we would need to put into the mix and and i i quickly recognize yes if i'm thinking about at the organizational level what else do we need to have to really drive strategy to results and then we added the other three pieces to the puzzle or what are what are really the first three gears in the the seven gears that drive strategy to results uh, which is, first of all, right people in the right roles with the right capabilities. Um, we can have the best strategy, the best vision on earth, and none of that counts if we don't have the right people to be able to execute it. Uh, so that became the first gear. The second gear was uh, the, the idea of aligning the organizational architecture. So things like system structure processes and we've already talked about culture those are the organizational architecture when when those things are misaligned to the strategy your your chances of actually achieving what you expect to get out of your strategy are almost non-existent and then the 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 next gear that i identified before i started writing the book was in great organizations that really do perform well and where people really want to contribute, they've got what we ended up describing in the book as a culture of communications. People sharing up, down, sideways, diagonally, however they need to on a regular basis, what's working, but more importantly, what's not working as well. People getting the feedback, holding the difficult conversations, leaders being, uh, vulnerable and empathetic and connecting uh, at all levels of their organization, people being comfortable uh, having conversations with a frontline team member all the way to the CEO. Was that person is the entrepreneur that started in the garage last week, uh, or it's the CEO of the you know Fortune 100 company that, that people can communicate all the way up and down. And so, so taking all of those together, those first four performance gears, and then the, adding in the three foundation gears is what really became the backbone for the book. 
And and I just love how when you have uh, building from uh, case studies and success, and and you probably could not have written this book year two in your career. You needed to ha- um, prove and have proof of concept, and then now you're you're taking what is successful in your working with organizations, and then showing people. I think that's it's it's so interesting. People, you know, we know that books are wonderful, but I don't think that they really realize how um, it really is similar to going to one of the mentors you really look up to and appreciate and go, please mentor me. And they're like, okay, let's meet together once a week. And I'll tell you all the lessons I've learned. They're like, please, thank you. Thank you. How much can I pay you? Well, in reality, that's what a book is doing. You are taking lessons learned and strategies proven and telling people what to do. And I think people look at it and they buy a book and they're like, oh, I'll read the first chapter. And statistically, you know, 60% of the people never finish reading the book. So it's, I think it's really something people need to take, sit up and take notice and say, wow, Sean has figured out some things. Boy, the book is a drop in the bucket. It's, it's less than two Starbucks, I'm sure. And let's get this thing and, and learn and implement m- mostly. Yeah. I, Mike, I think that's spot on. I, I, there's zero chance that in uh, two years into my career uh, doing what I'm doing here, I would have had a clue. I, I might've have been able to make some stuff up uh but uh and it's and it's really interesting as 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 the backbone around the seven gears evolved and i started thinking about what what goes into each chapter what's this look like how then looking back kind of what you described looking back across my career the things that we've been involved in i began to see how all of those different the the projects that we've been engaged in, engaged in the clients we've had a chance to work with, how we had worked on all of those elements at different points in time. And I tell some of the stories uh, in, in the book about how it fits in. It was interesting looking back and seeing, okay, so when we did this project where we helped this organization restructure and they had huge improvements in results, what well, that I mean, I was clearly a part of that. Their architecture was a mess. We didn't recognize it as one of the seven gears at that point in time because we didn't even recognize the gears. But we knew that by helping them restructure or clients that we've helped change their compensation system or places where we've taken organ helped organ guided organizations through kind of reshaping their culture to better align the strategy. Looking back on it, you realize, man, that was that was a piece of the to the that was the piece for the puzzle at, for them at that point in time that was most critical. So what we've really tried to do here, and again, I'm not going to pretend like get in gear answers everybody's questions about everything all the time to make great organizations. What I do know is those seven gears, if you think through those and you think about which ones most apply to your organization that might need some help, if we fix any one of the gears, you're going to be a little bit better off than if you leave them all completely alone. Yeah. Well, Sean, I'd just like to wrap up by saying thank you for coming on. What's the best way that people can uh, pick up a copy of your book? Okay. So uh, you can go to our website at www.ici.com, or you can get the book today on uh, amazon.com, Get In Gear, The Seven Gears That Drive Strategy to Results. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you coming on, Sean. It was great talking to you. And uh, if you'd like to pick up a copy of his book, go to his website, go to Amazon, just type in uh, the title, Get In Year. And if you like this podcast, I certainly would appreciate a review on iTunes. Just go to ratethispodcast.com slash influential, and you can leave your review there. Sean, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful talking with you. Mike, thanks a bunch. Much appreciate the time. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.